the streaming wars just got a bit more crowded. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons to give Quibi streaming service a try. Is Quibi a noun or a verb? Quibi is definitely a noun. I honestly don't know what a noun or a verb is. For this list, we're looking at the new streaming service Quibi, which is offering a 90-day free trial in most markets, and the various reasons you should consider trying it out for yourself. Madam President, the asteroid's impact is imminent. How long do we have? Two, three Quibis tops. My God. Number 10, the concept. What is Quibi? Couldn't tell ya. The streaming industry is becoming an increasingly crowded one. As such, new contenders need to find creative ways to distinguish themselves, and that is just what Quibi aims to do. Rather than competing for your evening or weekend binging hours, they want to help fill smaller gaps in your day with content that comes in at less than 10 minutes per episode. A subscription-based streaming service intended to be used on mobile devices, Quibi stands for Quick Bytes. The idea is that by offering short-form programming with new installments daily, Quibi needn't be a Netflix alternative, but something else entirely. The grand storytelling that we have come to love in a two-hour movie with the writing technique of television that we created, Quibi, which is short for Quick Bites. Number nine, the demographic. Let's get this mm. According to Quibi's founder, the, quote, bullseye is a 25 to 35-year-old multicultural diverse millennial audience and extends to a broader range of 18 to 44-year-olds. While the major streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video try to appeal to a wide range of demographics, Quibi isn't producing content intended for kids and family. And when you scroll through the available launch titles, this quickly becomes clear. This is game show where we take two straight contestants and put them head to head to see which one of them will be named honorarily gay as Addressing the lack of family-oriented content or children's shows, the founder has said, quote, someday maybe we will be that, but we're not tackling that going in because it's just a whole other audience. And we frankly don't have the bandwidth to try and be all things to all people. Mike Farrow is our one and only suspect in this morning's bombing. Number eight, the cost post-trial. I'll be out in a quibby, Kendall. Bring that hand up a little bit higher. Good. The industry standard for a trial period of a new service is usually between seven and 30 days. 90 days, by contrast, gives you a whole lot of time to get familiar with the platform and its content. And Quibi is betting on the fact that after those 90 days, their service will have become such an integral part of your routine that you will be willing to pay for it. Acknowledging that short-form content might not be as valuable, Quibi is trying to keep the subscription costs to a minimum with a two-tiered system. For $5 a month, you get an ad-supported version and an ad-free one for $8 a month. It's worth noting that the ads tend to be much shorter compared to many other ad-supported streaming services. The age of mobile entertainment. And we are at the very beginning of exploring how this new medium can be used to create amazing entertainment, unlike anything that has been seen in film and television. Number seven, a bold licensing model. So I grew up in an era that content is king. Content is king maker, but clearly today, platform is the king. We know what you're thinking. What does it matter to you as a consumer how Quibi goes about getting content? Simple. Their approach further reinforces the fact that they're thinking outside the box. Quibi isn't interested in building a library of exclusive titles. While the shows debut on Quibi, creators are given the rights to repackage and bring their content to other platforms or networks after two years. After seven years, the creators are given full ownership over the content, which is almost unheard of in television and film. By taking this unique approach, Quibi can attract big name creators and maybe even convince them that this is the perfect platform for their passion project. Furthermore, it ensures a constant stream of fresh new content. Did your ex borrow your phone and return it with a cracked screen? You may be entitled to a cash settlement. Number six, a wide variety of content. I'm an actor, precision driver. Quibi's commitment to compact content might seem limiting, but their launch titles and the plethora of other forthcoming projects proves that is not the case. They're covering the gamut of both scripted and unscripted content. In their launch titles alone, they've got dramas, action thrillers, comedies, horror, competition shows, true crime docuseries, and various weather, news, sports, and culture shows. The content is broken down into three general categories. 
movies in chapters, which are scripted series broken down into roughly eight-minute episodes, unscripted and docs, which encompasses competition shows, reality TV, game shows and documentaries, and daily essentials, news programs dedicated to various aspects of news from politics to entertainment and everything in between. In short, Quibi covers all the bases for its core demographic. Relapse, Commander. We've got at least a Quibi left. Like tag or something? Number five, there are big names behind the scenes. With so much star power, we call this must-see Quibi. Earlier, we made reference to the founder of Quibi. Now it's time for a proper introduction. Jeffrey Katzenberg was the chairman of Walt Disney Studios during the Disney Renaissance, which spawned some of its most beloved animated films. He then went on to co-found DreamWorks. Suffice it to say, he's got a history of hugely successful media endeavors. And with Quibi, he's managed to attract similarly big-name talents to produce content for his streaming service. Guillermo del Toro, Jon Favreau, Anton Fuqua, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Doug Lyman, Michael Hurst, Andy Cohen, Jason Blum, Sam Raimi, 50 Cent, Ice Cube, The Farrelly Brothers, and many more. Quibi even has a Steven Spielberg-created horror series that, wait for it, is only available after dark. Now the working title is Spielberg's After Dark. It's going to be unavailable during the day. Quibi founder Jeffrey Katzenberg says Spielberg has written five or six short episodes called Chapters with possibly another 10 or 12 in the works. Number four, the star power. The sport in its purest form, a hunt to kill. Few streaming services have been able to boast such star-studded programming. Chance the Rapper hosts a new iteration of Punked. Chrissy Teigen hosts a court show. Will Forte and Caitlin Olsen star in a home renovation comedy. Liam Hemsworth and Sophie Turner star in scripted dramas, while LeBron James and Jennifer Lopez host feel-good documentaries and reality shows. Why do they call it the animal kingdom when it's clearly run by queens? Reese Witherspoon narrates a nature program, and Offset explores the world of cars. And that's just a handful of the launch titles. Forthcoming productions will include Idris Elba, Tom Cruise, Eric Andre, Will Arnett, Tyra Banks, Naomi Watts, Bill Burr, Cara Delevingne, Laura Dern, Zac Efron, Dakota Fanning, Bill Murray, Lawrence Fishburne, Don Cheadle, Kevin Hart, Anna Kendrick, Trevor Noah, and more. We could honestly go on all day. We got it. Number three, production value. And I said, I think there's a way to make a technology platform that will make watching video extraordinary on this device, creating a whole new generation of filmed entertainment. Katzenberg and CEO Meg Whitman, who serves on the board of Dropbox and was previously CEO of Hewlett Packard, are sparing no expense with Quibi. Speaking with Vulture, Katzenberg estimated that they're spending up to $100,000 per minute of content for their top tier programs. And watching dramatic series like Survive and Most Dangerous Game, it shows. The studios in which programs like Singled Out and Dishmantled are being shot are on par with their network equivalents. But hey, they can certainly afford it. Quibi reportedly managed to raise over $1.75 billion in funding. Warner Media, Disney, Alibaba, Sony, NBC Universal, Viacom CBS, everyone wants in on the action. And over $1 billion of that is going straight to content in the first year alone. No one's coming to get us. I'm fine with that. Number two. How much content? Your train will be here in just a quibby. <laughs> Perfect. High quality content is all well and good, but for a streaming service to maintain its subscriber base, it needs to keep the content coming. This is arguably the biggest issue that other contenders like Apple TV Plus have struggled with. Well, Quibi seems committed to keeping its audience engaged. Rather than releasing entire seasons or series in one fell swoop, or releasing episodes weekly, it's uploading new episodes daily and new shows weekly. Over the course of its first year following the launch of the platform, it will release somewhere in the ballpark of 7,000 individual pieces of content. This includes up to a dozen daily Quick Byte news segments each and every day. So yeah, you are unlikely to run out of content to watch. You gotta leave. I'll be one of them in less than a quibby. What? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, content designed for mobile. Hello? 
The fun thing, though, is when you rotate your phone to landscape, the action proceeds as in a traditional thriller. One of the things for which Quibi has received criticism is that it's a mobile exclusive streaming platform. It cannot be watched in browser, nor is there an app for smart TVs. The app doesn't have the ability to be cast natively to another screen, though there are third-party workarounds. There is a reason for this, though. Quibi content is specifically designed for mobile viewing. Typically, streaming services are meant to be watched in landscape, but Quibi content is notable in that it's been shot, framed, and edited in such a way as to look good in both landscape and portrait. You can switch back and forth at your convenience instantly. And while that might seem like a minor perk, it's totally unprecedented and a major innovation in the world of mobile streaming. My designers are your designers. <sighs> Not yes, I get it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.